Welcome, everybody. Welcome to live with Sarah and Tasha. We are here today, as usual, to hopefully bring you some joy on what we would also hope is a fairly sunny July day. I'm Sarah Hodson, the founder and CEO at Live Well Exercise Clinic, and joined by my what I'll call beach hair tousled beautiful Tasha McCray, and I'm the uh, Vice President of Brand and Culture here at LiveWell. Just to give you some context, earlier this morning I had worked out vigorously. I was a sweaty mess and I had had a quick shower right before a meeting with Sarah and she told me my hair looked beautiful and I said oh it's drying naturally and then she <laughs> said just leave it Sarah but you will know that I did do a quick blow dry before our call today because it was starting to frizz out the more and more it dried. Well it looks beautiful. Oh, I have pulled my hair back on this July summer day. Uh, enough about hair. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so we're excited, of course, to have all of you join us today. And um, again, Thursdays are one of our favorite days where we get to see the faces of our members from across Canada, from, from all of our locations. And, um, you know, the exciting thing is that in the next, in the next year, we're going to see more Live Wells pop up across Canada in Alberta, more in Ontario. And so um, a very exciting time as, um, as Canadians and as we hopefully are slowly coming out of COVID here, um, you know, we've never really thought about our health as much as we have now. So um, at LiveWell, we are just um, grateful to be able to provide Canadians the opportunity to really live life to the fullest and to come to our clinics and exercise and be part of this great community. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Sarah and I are LiveWell's original exor clinical exercise physiologists and health coaches. And so we're just excited uh, to be able to join you today to just talk about our favorite topic, which is the power of exercise and behavior change to help you live your life to the fullest. Because really, isn't that what it's all about? It's not just about how much weight you can lift or how fast you can walk on the treadmill. It's how that translates into your everyday life and how you can take that energy and strength and vitality and go out and live the way you would like to live with the people you want to live it with. So just a friendly reminder, if you can see your face on the screen, that means that we can all see you and we love that. Um, but uh, we want everybody, everyone to be comfortable. So um, if your camera is on, we can see you. And if you would prefer to not have your face shown, you're welcome to turn off your camera, whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, please join in the conversation today. You can do that by using the chat function here on Zoom. We do have everybody muted so that we can get a nice clear recording. But if you want to uh, join in and comment or ask a question, you can do that just by clicking that chat. All right. Should Let's we release started. our topic for today? Release the hounds. <laughs> today, Sarah and I could talk about this for hours. So we're going to really try to stick to our half hour. Just catch on your lunch. And um, we really want to talk about today the importance of resistance training. And so let's start off by talking about what do we mean when we say the words resistance training? And, and resistance training is when you're using weights or bands or, or even your body weight to challenge your muscles. So you're doing some pushing or pulling against some kind of load. And so for those of you who are at Live Well, most of the exercises that are listed on your exercise card would classify as this resistance training. It's kind of when you're not using the machines. And for many people, when they're trying to exercise on their own, it's resistance training that is the most intimidating part. And so that's 
often what they just sort of throw to the side or ignore and just decide, oh, I'll go walking or I'll swim or, or something that feels a little bit more accessible. And they let that resistance training portion of their fitness slide. And so today we really want to talk about why this is so vital to include in your overall exercise program and how it's going to help you live your best life. And when we, um, when we look at that comparison and, and, you know, Tash, I love how you're kind of bringing up that resistance training is often intimidating. And, and I think it's intimidating because when we think of doing cardio, so that's where we're on the machines in the clinic, or we're going for a walk, we're kind of exercising one main muscle and that's our heart. And by exercising our heart, we're getting a ton of different benefits. But when we're talking about resistance training, we're now having to think of every other muscle in the body and how do we effectively work those. And so it's, you know, with cardio, we can kind of stick at doing a similar type of routine, but we want to be making sure that we're increasing our intensity and so forth to challenge our bodies. But when it comes to resistance training, we have to think of all of the muscle groups in the body, which I'm sure is why many of you are grateful that your CEPs and coaches at Live Well can just do that for you and provide it to you. And you can simply go along and, and participate. Um, but, you know, I think it's important for us to know that as we age, we actually do lose muscle mass about anywhere from about three to 8% per decade. And that rate actually picks up after we are 60 years young. Um, and of course, this has significant impacts on our metabolism, our strength and our agility, um, which then has consequences to really our overall ability to perform what we call our activities of, of daily living, um, taking the laundry up the stairs, going out and getting our groceries done, those types of things, getting in and out of the bath or the shower. Um, but studies actually within the last six years are starting to question whether this natural decline is a result of um, our biology or is it a result of that we are more sedentary creatures. We've found our society to be highly efficient in how we move our bodies, far more escalators and elevators and less, less stairs. Um, and so these studies are really starting to raise questions about the normal aging process and what that should really look like for our muscles. And, and so far from these studies, it actually appears that people who are active throughout their lifespan can retain their muscle size and, and the muscle fiber composition as they age, which in turn keeps their muscles as healthy and as metabolically active as people who are decades younger than them. Did you know, Sarah, did you know that one of those stories or one of those stories, studies, sorry, not stories, one of those store, uh, never mind, studies <laughs> um, was actually done using Cirque du Soleil performers who are performing into their um, older years and they were able to circus perform just as well as their younger counterparts or, or, and, and maintain that muscle mass. I thought that was kind of a cool one. That is a really good one. I like that. Um, so muscle is metabolically active tissue. And that's part of the reason that we want to hold on to it, grow it, keep it, have it. And really for our metabolism and, and metabolism isn't just about losing weight, but I'll talk a little bit about um, weight here as I as I talk about this portion. Um, that means the more muscle we have, the more energy we're going to burn just sitting around. So right here sitting, chatting with you, though I know I use my hands a lot and that uses those muscles, but even if I pin my hands down, I would burn more energy um, if I have more muscle on my body. And muscle eats energy to just keep itself going. So when we 
lose muscle mass, as Sarah was talking about, as we age, we also see a reduction in our resting metabolic rate. And everybody's always talking about, you know, as I'm aging, my metabolism is really slowing down. Well, there is a little bit of a coupling going on. It's not the only reason our metabolism slows down, but we really want to hang on to that muscle mass by and keep our body composition lean. So lean muscle mass versus fat mass, we have a muscle is considered lean body mass and resistance training is what's going to help us keep that muscle mass and then decrease or counteract that decrease that we see in metabolism. And so when we look at resistance training, it also has really unique benefits for people with prediabetes and diabetes. And, and I, I love this topic and I have the opportunity twice a year to teach this to nurses and, and pharmacists and other healthcare professionals who are um, taking what's called a diabetes educator course to work as a diabetes educator, whether that be in a hospital or in a doctor's office. And I get to teach the exercise and physical activity portion. Um, and so, you know, I think it's really, really intriguing how our bodies are made to really naturally manage blood sugars and our muscles have a huge role in that. Um, actually, when muscle contracts, it sucks up three times more glucose. So simply by doing a bicep curl, Think of it again as a sponge. You're doing a bicep curl and the gates are opening and the sugar is rushing into that muscle cell. And, and what we actually know is that specifically during exercise, so during resistance training, if you're doing a set of bicep curls and a set of sit to stands or squats and you know a set of tricep um, extensions, during those exercises, your body is actually absorbing more of your blood sugars and therefore managing the blood sugar in your bloodstream. And so um, that happens in as you know, one bout of exercise. But over the long term, exercise actually changes the chemistry as to how your blood sugars are managed even outside of those um, bouts of exercise. So at the times that you're not exercising, your body is actually able to manage your blood sugars a lot better, which is why resistance training is a huge component of diabetes prevention and management. And over the 20 year uh, history that Tash and I have had in this field, and specifically working with people who have chronic health conditions and empowering them through exercise, we, when we started 20 years ago, there was very few um, specific guidelines that included resistance training when it came to say exercise and heart disease or exercise and diabetes or exercise and obesity, very few guidelines included resistance training. And over the last decade or even over the last 15 years, we have slowly started to see resistance training be a foundation foundational and fundamental um, component of people's overall physical activity and therefore the treatment of chronic health conditions like diabetes. Yeah, definitely. And it's not just our blood sugars, it's also our brain that benefits from resistance training. So both aerobic, so that cardiovascular work and resistance training can improve scores on cognitive tests. And it was actually a study out um, where Sarah and I went to school out in UBC that actually looked at um, does resistance training train a different area and help memory differently than um, aerobic training or cardiovascular training does. And the results of that study did show that in fact, resistance and aerobic air, uh, training may affect different areas of the brain and therefore help us in different parts of our memory. So we have verbal memory, which is the remembering of words and names, and we have spatial memory, which is remembering kind of where we left our keys kind of memory. And it appears that 
that the two different types of training does affect the brain differently. And this is why it's so important to make sure that we're just not out there walking or swimming, that we're also getting that additional brain boosting benefit by doing those resistant exercises. So when we look at guidelines, whether it be for diabetes, whether it be for our cognitive health, um, our heart health, our overall body, it's always a combination of resistance training and exercise exercise training that comes out on top. We, we really need both sides of that coin to take full advantage of the health benefits and the fitness benefits of exercise. Yeah, and so, you know, you're probably hearing us talking about this and thinking, okay, does this mean that I need to be doing resistance training every single day or how does this work? Um, and so as much as our muscles need to be worked, our muscles also do need a little bit of a break. And so physical activity guidelines uh, do suggest resistance training twice per week, which is very convenient for our Live Well members who attend twice a week. So you know that you're getting in what is required. Um, for people who are managing their diabetes, it is recommended to do resistance training three times per week. So getting in one extra session in the week will be very beneficial. And simply because of everything that I said before, so important that we're working that muscle metabolism in order to manage our blood sugars. And so um, we really want to help you successfully achieve your resistance training frequency. That's why when Tash and I sat down and really developed the Live Well program, we developed it in the way that you see it today. Um, and so remember when you are moving your sessions around to try to move them within that one week period so that you're not getting kind of one day in this week and then three the next week and then maybe missing a week and trying to squeeze four in in a week, but really trying to maintain that consistency of two sessions per week because exercise is medicine. Yeah, such a good point about dosage there, Sarah. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that I get or I hear a lot, or a comment maybe that I hear a lot, especially um, when working with women, when we're resistance training, is I don't want to lift too much weight because I don't want to bulk up. So mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. And, and really in to, to become bulky, which is called muscle hypertrophy, um, you really have to train high volumes and um, often train every day and very often. So, so there's very little concern, especially for women, because we don't have the testosterone it often takes to bulk up. Um, it's very little concern of somebody bulking up when they're doing resistance training, even if they're lifting pretty heavy weights and they're doing kind of more of a hypertrophy phase of their training program. We want to build muscle. We want to see that muscle fiber size increase. And in fact, what I typically see when people start training is not that they feel that Yes, their muscle is getting bigger, but the composition of their body is changing. So they're becoming more compact. And they're saying, you know, that's when we hear people say, I haven't lost any weight, but you know, my pants fit way looser. Why is that? They're gaining muscle. And the old adage is true. Muscles weighs more than fat. And they're becoming actually more compact. So the way the scale isn't telling the whole story. The scale is saying that, you know, your weight is staying the same, but that doesn't mean that the composition of your body isn't changing for the better and for the healthier. So ladies out there or gentlemen who are concerned about lifting those heavier weights for bulk, don't worry about that. We would have to train so, we would have to be so diligent to really bulk you up and get that bodybuilding type of look going. So don't be concerned about lifting heavy weights. You will be more likely to get all those benefits that we've been talking about by making sure that you have enough weight when you're lifting. 
And, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, I often hear in the clinic also, um, and I think that some of you will be able to maybe relate to this is, you know, when I come back from some time off or from being on, on vacation, um, I find that my exercises are a little bit more difficult. Why is that? Um, and, you know, one of the, one of the things that I, I find so intriguing about um, resistance training is that we, we work incrementally at building up our, our muscle metabolism. Like Tasha was saying, we're not going to bulk up kind of in a few short weeks or months or, or really even over time, it takes a very specific prescription to get there. Um, but what we do know is that even in as little as one week, just kind of taking it off and not doing any of our resistance training exercises, we actually lose about 11% of our muscle or of the gains that we've made through all of those weeks, months, and years of resistance training. We lose about 11% of that in a week. So it is something that to just put in those two days um, in a week, even, even if we are, um, you know, away, even if we're out of town, to just find a way to do those very basic foundational exercises. And um, I think an interesting thing that we've heard at LiveWell, even over the last year, and more specifically over the last several months, is how our members are enjoying and appreciating and using their opportunity to live stream in for exercise sessions, or to use the on-demand member portal, those exercise videos, so that you truly can do all of the different types of exercises, no matter where you are. You could be in Spain, you could be in France, you could be anywhere, and uh, you, can, you can log in and you can get those exercises in. So um, the key message there is that, yes, after even a week of not doing your resistance training exercises, you may find them more difficult. And that's because we lose just a little bit more than 10% a week. So keeping at it is part of the success plan there. Yeah. And I, Sarah, as we lose, whether it's, you know, the, the percentage through age or, or what we're seeing in, in strength in a week, mm -hmm. remember that that muscle affects your not only your strength but your stamina your balance your coordination and really those are the the key things that allow us to function and have mobility independence and and that general vibrancy not being dependent on others to do things so strengthening those muscles can you know make sure that we're supporting our joints properly so it can lead to less back pain and arthritic pain so really really important to to make sure that we're prioritizing it and i know i think i've shared on this call before you know when i um first had my my son um which is close to 14 years ago now <laughs> um i was out walking with that baby buggy when the other um moms and walking 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 but not really prioritizing my resistance training. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I went back to work in cardiac rehab and started leading people through there. And, and I wasn't carrying very even heavy weights and started doing that, that suddenly I started to see body composition changes and all of this. And suddenly everything kind of fell into place. And that was where I knew it. Um, academically prior to that now at that time I really kind of saw it come to life in my my own world that while even even that little bit of resistance training that I was doing leading those classes made a world of difference to my strength and how my my body reacted so fit it in make the time for it I, I saw a great quote um, by James Clear, who I've talked about before and just loved, you know, making your life a little harder by getting that exercise in now makes your whole life easier. Um, so a little bit of hard will make everything else easier. So make sure you prioritize that time for resistance training. I promise it'll be worth it. How many of you can relate to that, that putting in the work 
in exercise is making your life easier and more full and more enjoyable. How many joy hands if you are? Yes. Yeah, awesome. It, does. it doesn't so have to be the hour in clinic that your life is more full, though no. we certainly hope it is. <laughs> But it's those stories that we hear about, I was able to pick up my grandson as he ran towards me without falling over or hurting myself. I was able to go out and uh, I talked to somebody a few years back, I was able to go out and fulfill my life's dream to um, see the pyramids and be able to walk around and my knees allowed me to do that because I've been exercising. So putting in the time to take care of your body will reap rewards in all sorts of different areas. Yeah. So what should you do this week to live well? Well, I think it's no surprise. Make sure you get in those two days of resistance training. If you are someone who has prediabetes or diabetes, really trying to find that third day of resistance training to fit into your schedule. And you'll do that by making a date with exercise. If you need to add a session into the clinic in order to get in a third day, you can do so. You can do that through your member portal, um, but really making sure that you've made that date with exercise. All right. So Sarah and I are back next Thursday, same time, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be talking about exercise and weight loss. So we already talked a little bit about how resistance training today can help us lose weight, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. If you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. You can catch all of the replays of our live episodes and catch some other fun videos that we put out here at LiveWell. We want to thank all of our members for joining us today. We love this Thursday, as Sarah said at the top of the hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube on a replay and you're not a LiveWell member, we would like to invite you to be our guest. You can learn more about us at www.livewellclinic.ca and click on Be Our Guest to learn more about how we could host you with a custom exercise program at one of our clinics for a session. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We absolutely loved sharing with you today. Again, a topic that we could have spoken for hours about, but we actually are letting you go in enough time today. So that is a win for us today. Thank <laughs> you. And we will see you all next week. Same time, same place.